Hello, welcome to this CNCF webinar where we are going to talk about Trusted Boot and specifically how the Keros project implements Trusted Boot. First, we are going to have um, a look, generally speaking, at um, Trusted Boot and how, what are the ingredients and what are the challenges that it tries to solve. Um, then we are going to have a look at how Linux uh, handles the booting process. Um, and more specifically, how um, Trusted Boot differs here and how Kairos implements um, booting. Um, then we are going to have a deep dive on the measurement versus encryption, um, and we are going to have um, some security consideration on the, the implementation that we have taken. Um, then it will follow up a short demo uh, where we will see um, booting um, of a um, Trusted Boot system um, and an example, um, sort of examples to underline the security consideration why we picked up some of the design choices that we did. Um, first of all, yeah, um, I would like to introduce myself. I'm Ettore Di Giacinto. I'm head of Open Source at Spectre Cloud. Um, I've been involved in open source for almost 18 years, um, wearing different hats. Um, so I'm, I'm also was a developer, again, to Linux developer, and I had uh, stint, my last stint was at SUSE. Um, so what is all the fuzz about the cloud and the edge? So edge, it's um, becoming very much important lately um, because it's um, being uh, used almost everywhere. So the computation, it's moving not only uh, to the cloud, but also closer to, uh, to the real use cases. So we can think about edge at retail shops, for instance, also to government or public sector deployments, um, trains course on ATM. So it's not only about Kubernetes, even if um, there is a strong also push towards using Kubernetes everywhere. Um, the edge by itself have its own set of challenges because um, as you can imagine, um, there are um, different uh, use cases which requires different um, set of feature sets. So, um, for instance, high availability um, or data encryption to ensure that the, the data is kept secure, um, preventing from cold boot attacks or physical attacks, um, set up and maintenance. So the maintenance is also a very st strong point where we, um, no, everybody can allow to have um, technical um, sk or skilled people um, closer to those machines where they are actually running the workloads. Uh, so it's very important to have um, sort of management plan, but as well, it's very important to have um, a mechanism that prevents from um, theft or cold boot, at boot attacks or where people can actually uh, mangle with the device um, physically. Um, and this is very important that we are going to see why trusted boot is important and solves um, critical issues in, the, in this field. Um, so why uh, we're talking about trusted boot what are the goals and what are we trying to solve here uh, so what we are going to solve it's preventing modification to the system and that is both runtime and offline so we're going to have a very um, deep dive into uh, what uh, what we're trying to do and why um, and prevent of course the test um, of the customer data so whatever it's um, actually a device a keypad or are trying to process at the edge. We don't want um, anybody to have access to it. So if somebody steals the device, um, power it off and, and go, walk away with the device, um, they shouldn't be capable of um, reverse it, reverse engineering when um, uh, in another uh, location. So we want to also keep the simple UX as we have today, because we are going to uh, see how Keros does things differently. And where it sets it apart from other um, distributions. Um, what are not goals here of the conversation is to prevent the theft of the device. So we are not talking about um, a physical security layer, but rather a software a security layer that prevents uh, physical attacks. Um, what are the uh, most important um, gotchas that we would like to, I would like to underline here? Um, there is a key difference between measurement and encryption. So measurement in um, the way that we are discussing it here guarantees immutability uh, and verifies the software integrity. So um, when we talk about measurement, we talk about a very complex topic. So I'm trying to simplify it here in this conversation, but the, the, um, the outcome of it 
is trying to make sure that the software um, is run against um, a measurement. And most importantly, so if um, a device is equipped with the testing software, we don't want the device to um, power on again if that software is modified. So the system has to somehow assess itself during um, the boot process to be able to know if it wasn't modified by um, anything. So um, have to be, of course, tampered proof both online and offline. So we are going to deep delve on why uh, we took some um, design choices uh, to make sure that we are also tamper proof online. Um, or at least um, it's not possible to, to change the system um, online as well. Uh, encryption. It's different, right? So the encryption, we refer to the fact that the data is readable offline. So um, if somebody steals the device or take um, take off the, the disk from the from the system, they cannot see the data. Um, of course, encryption doesn't give you guarantee that the data is immutable because when the system is in runtime, the data is can be manipulated. Um, so there are other um, security frameworks that are taking care of. Uh, encryption of data also online, like um, confidential computing, but this is out of scope of this conversation. So what are the ingredients um, to make uh, trusted boot work and um, how we can solve the challenges at the edge? Um, so we're going to see how um, trusted boot is split into several components. Um, some of them we already touched. Uh, one of them, the main component is what we call UKI, which is Unified Kernel Image, or USI, Unified System Image. So from a technical standpoint, Keros chooses USI, and we are going to see later uh, what, um, what is the difference. Um, secure, secure boot, uh, measured boot are a key ingredient as well. A secure boot, it's a um, um, security um, framework that it's very well established in the, in the firmware since the um, past um, at least almost um, 20 years. Uh, so we have um, seen Secure Boot uh, growing in adoption. Um, now, basically, any uh, recent hardware should have support for Secure Boot, and most importantly, for uh, with UFI. Uh, so since the, um, the BIOS um, was in um, from the beginning of the, um, the computers, the attackers basically um, challenged the security system of the BIOS and the UFIs um, was standing um, as a security mechanism to, to make sure that um, we boot um, secure um, um, part of the systems. Now we are going to see how um, this concept is extended a little bit to, to make sure that um, we adopt secure boot to put larger FA files. Um, and also another key ingredient is TPM, which can be both discrete or emulated by um, firmware. Um, so we are not uh, constrained to an hardware implementation. However, the hardware implementation seems to be moderately um, more safe. Um, of course, verified kernels and assigned kernel models are part of this as well. And encryption of this with TPM, which is not something new, um, again, also secure boot is not something new, um, but the way all of this is implemented together, it is on, you can read more of the references in uh, the docs of Keros and also on the fantastic blog post by Leonard Pottering, the author of System the uh, Brave New Trusted Boot Board. So um, where are we um, we're looking uh, at here? Um, it's a... Um, trying to make a um, difference between uh, the standard Linux booting on the left and uh, the Keros booting mechanism on the right. So um, Keros already does a little bit of um, distinction uh, between um, the booting um, from a standard Linux distribution um, standpoint. Um, by looking at the left picture, we can see how the boot starts, starts from the firmware and then goes to the boot partition, which is typically unencrypted. Um, and then you have the grab bootloader taking in. Of course, you could have different bootloaders, um, but now um, the, um, specifically we are looking at grab because it's the most commonly used and been there since long time. Um, and then from grab or another bootloader that you um, like to 
uh, used there, um, you can jump basically directly to the kernel and then to the initRD. The initRD is just a very small system that have the, um, the proper the tools to in order to mount necessary mount points to switch to the real system. Um, and typically, the, the real system can also um, can also be small or big. It really depends. It can be in a partition, a different partition, and of course, it can be encrypted as well. So it really depends on the use case here because it could be um, an encrypted partition. Um, for instance, with a simple pass a passphrase that we enter with the keyboard, um, it can be a pin. So it can even be a pin um, mixed with the TPM chip. So um, and that allows you um, to uh, another degree of security. Um, however, um, this uh, kind of setup uh, requires a human interaction. Of course, there are other uh, mechanisms to avoid um, uh, user interaction, and you can also use TPM chips for that directly to um, encrypt the partition with Grub. Um, but you're going uh, now on the right. We're going to see the difference with Keros. So the Keros approach is slightly different because it starts with a boot partition, which is indeed containing Grub as a bootloader. But then um, the real system, uh, it's a single image already. So um, compri uh, and that that's including the kernel, the initRD, and the root FS. So uh, when we do the pivot root, we actually do the pivot root, but it's inside the same image, and we rely, for instance, on Grub. Um, to be able to mount uh, those image files as loopback devices. Um, that, that it's very different because then the system, it's um, a single unit and this is represented by a single file. Um, and this is very important because we are reusing this uh, concept during the upgrades on the, or the resets or during the life cycle of the, of the machine. So um, this is uh, tremendously important because separate, um, the um, um, a different um, life cycle um, usage of the box. Uh, it streamlined uh, the use by having uh, less operation. Um, of course, when you have to upgrade the machine, uh, you need to rebuild the image from scratch. And this is why uh, we talk about immutability a lot in the context of Keros. We um, think this is a very important um, aspect. And um, it, it helps um, during the management of uh, various um, thousands of nodes because uh, you build one image once and you deploy it uh, across different devices and they expect to be all the same. So there are no snowflakes during the upgrades. So we don't use a package manager during the upgrade, but we use the package manager during the build of the, of the image used to, uh, for the upgrade. And now we are going to see uh, closer uh, what's the difference um, with the UKI approach. Um, it's not too much different from the standpoint that we still have a single image file. In this case, the, the, the image file, it's a kernel and a root FS. Um, and uh, the bootloader in this case, it's changing. So from Grub, we switch it over to systemd boot because systemd have um, a tight integration with Trusted Boot, so it, um, it have most of the of the software pieces already tied together to provide the best out of the Trusted Boot um, um, implementation. Um, and the, the, the files are still uh, residing in the boot partition, which is um, unencrypted, so it can be, they can be accessible. Um, and the FEI file um, are um, for, are composed by the kernel and the root FS. So here we can do a, a distinction between UKI and USI because um, by specification, UKI files are uh, only kernel um, and init RAM FS. So it's meant to switch over to another system. So pivoting, like, um, like we basically have um, in the legacy Linux system um, over here. So when we do the pivoting here, we are, we are basically switching over to uh, the software into another image. And that can be, uh, for instance, switching to another system D, which is included um, over this um, partition or root FS that we'd like to, talk, uh, to, to name it. Um, and of course, there can be uh, different even kernel modules. Um, so when we do a, a pivot route, um, we are switching the context of the system. So the thing 
we are also handing over the init process, for instance. So the PID one is going to hand over the execution to another thing. So the only thing which is not moving during a pivot route, uh, it's the kernel. Everything else is moving. So in the, the in our approach, instead, which we call USI, uh, it's unified system image, um, there is no pivot route. So we jump from the kernel directly to the root FS, and then from there we mount um, we mount the, the system and overlay uh, that on top of the encrypted uh, user data. Um, this is what uh, stands this apart from um, from implementing um, directly um, UCI. So we call this unified system image. Now let's have a look at um, what is what are the differences with um, with a measured boot process. So a measured boot process has the difference um, that it stores each um, of the measurements in uh, what we call um, TPM, TPM PCR registries. Um, there is a certified, uh, certified root uh, of trust model, and that one is the first thing that uh, boots even before the FEI. Uh, so that's going to do its own measurement and store the measurement in TPM PCR registries. Now, uh, each one of those uh, steps you see here, uh, which are going to store the measurement, are actually extending the measurement, creating de facto um, chain of measurement so each uh, measurement depends on the measurement of the other um, block and this is done transparently by the tpm so uh, you cannot really store anything else which is not extended that allows basically to um, whenever we do the boot process and pass by to one of the steps that are outlined here so we go from crtm to the fi bios to the boot order and finally to the os all the measurements have to be um, match a certain expectation. And this is where the, the challenge comes. So um, when we build the OS, we build the OS in a way that we pre-compute the measurements so they cannot really be modified and the OS is going to refuse to boot if those are going to change. So this is um, this is the core of how the um, boot measurement um, process uh, works. Now, what, what's inside a unified system image? Um, there is nothing really um, confidential in there. So all the data which is contained into a USI is public. So we can think about it as a, an, an intram FS, but it, actually it's the whole root FS. Um, so there is a kernel, so there is a system D uh, as an init system. Um, there are file system tools uh, needed actually to um, discover the partition in the system and be able to mount that. And then there are the chaos components, which are um, needed in order to set up the immutable system or, for instance, configure the, the machine with the cloud configs and a locking partition. So there is nothing really um, important here to see, but um, everything that you find in a USI image is already public. And how does it work all together? So there are we can we can think about it in two steps because there is a signature verification right um, step that is done basically because since it's a single FEI file the UCI um, we are able to sign it with secure boot and make sure that uh, this file is the only one that should be uh, booted in the system and this is very important because if somebody tries to change the file with a um, wrong signature and the signature verification phase the system won't be able to boot and this is um, gated by the secure boot mechanism then the tpm um, enters into the stage um, so to say um, because then we decrypt the, the target uh, and um, the encrypted portion of the disk only if the measurement are matching and if that's matching the pcr policy keys so the PCR policy key is another um, important aspect of all of this because uh, when we generate um, those UCI, USI images, we are going to generate first a, uh, a set of keys that um, are going to be um, needed along the life cycle of the box. Um, and those certificates are going to be needed uh, every time that we're going to build a new image. Uh, for instance, if we... Um, if we fail um, to have, um, so if we, if we replace the PCR policy keys, then the system cannot be um, cannot be uh, able to decrypt the disk anymore because they have to make the measurement. And 
this is what makes it tamper proof. So whenever we do a modification to the system, that's going to be detected by the measurements and it needs also to have the PCR policies in order to, um, policy keys in order to uh, decrypt correctly the portion of the disk. So the target that we see here, it's the, the system after we, we boot with the UKI. The target is um, a mixture of uh, what the, it's inside the USI plus the overlaid content from the encrypted portion of the disk that we um, have been able to, to decrypt the boot process. So why we don't switch to, um, to a second uh, route, it's very important because um, switching to a second route, which is not measured, uh, would be um, a security uh, flaw um, because switching to um, um, a second image with not measured, it means that uh, in during runtime, a malware or a rootkit could actually modify and tamper it and we, it would go unnoticed. So it's very important to have the um, measured first mindset in this case, because it allows to we have a very much stronger security posture uh, rather than relying on the fact that you can modify the switch, uh, the, the, sorry, the second stage and get unnoticed. Um, it's not possible to measure the switch route, uh, the second image, the second stage image now um, it, for, for various reasons. Uh, one of those is also because uh, it's not easy to measure a big uh, chunk of files uh, with the TPM chip. So, Possibly in the future, there will be an um, uh, enhancement on this area. But the, the choice here is also to make things very simple because it um, makes also the maintenance very simple to have one single file which is signed and measured at the same time. Uh, we agree, uh, we do have a much more um, uh, security in Boston in this case. So, how, um, how they are composed, those USI files? Um, are uh, unencrypted first. Um, they are containing, as we were speaking, not uh, something which is um, confidential. So they are the, the content of those files are public. So um, the first section we have a system disturb, um, which actually allows the, to the FBI file to be booted directly from the firmware without any bootloader. Um, then there is a kernel and the in it come first. There are other portion of the FBI file, which um, I've kept um, not this slide to make things much more simple. Um, however, uh, taking into consideration, those are the, the biggest, um, um, the most important uh, part of the FI file that we care about. Um, and how we can create um, um, UKI file. Uh, so what we do basically is run a UKI file tool, which is um, part of system D. Uh, which takes an in, as input um, different portions of the um, of the FI file. So the initram first, the kernel, the S release, and the you name and CMD line, for instance, um, because also the CMD line cannot be tampered. So we cannot boot an FI file with a different CMD line, which wasn't signed against. So this is very important, which mm, makes it stand apart also, um, because now the system that we're going to have uh, cannot be booted differently than it was um, supposed to be when uh, when um, when when constructed. So the initramfs in, in the specific case of Keros, it's not an initramfs, but it's the full rootfs, um, and which makes it um, much stronger. Um, approach. And how um, this is. Um, split uh, is shown in the following slide. So um, the, the whole FEI file is signed with secure boot prepaid key um, and uh, the portion with the, which are measured um, are the kernel, the, the root FS, the CMD line, the release, the new name and others which are also there are smaller components that can be also measured as well like the splash image uh, or, the, or the device tree uh, database. Um, and and those uh, are actually, uh, the measurement of those parts are signed with the private key. Okay, and the public key, uh, it's then um, made part of the, the FI file. Um, and we have also the PCR policies, which are seen in the parts of the PPM banks that are responsible to decrypt the disk. So 
only if the measurement and the, the signatures um, are matching, then we can actually um, unseal the TPM PCR banks that allows to uh, decrypt the portion of the of the disk that we are interested in. Now uh, we're going to see um, a small demo where uh, first we generate the keys required to um, to build the OS and in the specific case, the installer ISO, but those keys are actually also needed to build the other um, other ways um, to install the system. So the, the keys are needed also to generate the FEA file or um, a container image um, used for the upgrade. So the same keys are used for the whole life cycle of the of the box or the boxes or um, or the cluster, right? Uh, and then in the um, next, we are going to see um, a booting uh, system. So um, all virtualized in a VM, um, how the ISO is going to be booted, um, how um, then it's going to be installed, and then a um, deeper look on how a system looks like after installation. So the key generation actually um, um, allows us to generate uh, keys for secure boot, but also the PCR policies, which are responsible for the um, decryption of the, the partition, which are uh, encrypted in the, in the system. And in order to do that, um, we will use a um, container image, which is being um, published by the Keros team. Uh, and this container image have all the tools uh, needed to generate uh, specific artifacts. Um, here we can see the keys have been generated and between uh, the keys needed, which is the secure boot um, certificates and the, and the keys needed to actually uh, boot the UKI files, um, there is also uh, all the, the certificate database needed um, to do the auto enrollment for the installer ISO. So right afterward, we can uh, go and see how uh, it looks like um, the process of building an installer ISO. The installer ISO will embed um, part of the, the public part of the certificates, uh, which are also needed to do the um, UFI um, uh, enrollment um, of the, the secure boot artifact. So we can see here we start from a screen case. Um, and then and tool called um, US Builder, uh, which is part of the artifacts built by the Keros team, um, to actually create an installer ISO. Um, the installer ISO is built off from a container image, as I just explained. And the container image can actually be used um, as a source and to allow for the customization in a simple Docker file. Um, the input of this process is both the container image and the keys that we generated in the previous steps. And this also means that whenever we have to build um, again another container um, image for the upgrades of the system, we will need to um, supply the same keys. Now we are going to boot the ISO and do the installation. So in order to boot the ISO, we are going to create um, a simple Docker container which contains the chemo dependencies. So we will uh, start this um, in a VM. So um, the command that you see here are available in documentation of um, the Keros website. Um, and you can check out here, it's just the MO commands, which are basically is a wrapper to avoid to install any dependencies in the system. So, we build this container image, and this container image actually is used for two things. Um, the first one, which you will see in the top pane, is to um, start an emulation of the TPM chip. So we're going to emulate the TPM chip. Uh, and on the bottom one, we're going to start the chemo ISO that we have just built. Um, the commands are um, documented in the Keros website, and you can uh, reproduce the same as well locally. Uh, in this case, we are specifying the CD-ROM um, entry, the ISO that we have just built. And you can see here how uh, the system is also uh, automatically enrolling the secure boot keys from the directories uh, available in the ISO. So all the certificates that we used and we generated from the first steps are going to be used now. So you can see the ICD, which is now boot and the FEI file, it's going to boot. So the FEI file here, uh, it's a UKI, 
image, so it have the kernel and the init RT uh, included. The init RT in this case, it's all who has, so the, uh, the approach that Keros takes here, it's to have a unified system image. Um, so the single FEI file, it's the whole OS. So the OS, it's um, signed as an FEI file with the secure boot and also measured by DTPMG. So uh, now we are going to the installation process. The installation process of Chaos can happen in different ways. And this one, it's the interactive installer that you're going to see. So um, just a bunch of um, questions and that you can answer and we have straight away a full installation. So you can see the installation is very quick because in this case, we have to just copy a FA file and encrypt, and encrypt the partitions. We can have a quick look and we can see now here that there are the PM and the persistent partition, which are encrypted. Those are very chaos specific um, partition. OEM contains the configuration of the system along the cloud configs and the persistent partition instead contains everything else, which is the user data um, accumulated with the use of the OS. <clears throat> so we can also see um, by listing with LSBLK um, the partitions. Uh, and now we are going to um, stop the system, uh, reboot, and check uh, what happens at the first boot and have a more uh, deep dive on what are the partition, how they are used in the system. So the booting is happening, and you can see also in top end the operation um, triangulated by the TPM chip. Um, so now we start the first boot. Um, basically, what it means, we are going to restart again the TPM. Uh, chip uh, emulation process and on the uh, bottom of the pane, we're going to uh, boot the, um, the virtual machine um, without the CD ROM. So it's only booting from the disk. You can see um, there are three entries active passing and recovery, which are common to a Keros system. So um, now we have selected the active entry and we will see the system booting. You can see now um, a bunch of um, the message or output directly because this is uh, running uh, from him from the console. Um, but now we will uh, be able to log in into the system. And we have uh, installed it with the Keros, it's an evident Keros password. Um, to default, just to, to test things out. And you can see there is a Fedora Linux container image um, displayed in the, um, in the welcome message. So, um, we can now we can actually now list the the partition and we can see that uh, the OM and persistent are encrypted with the crypt the crypto type over there. Also see a list with the um, LSBLK um, and the mount how actually uh, they are used in the system. So um, as a reminder, in the in the system um, we have um, part of the mount points. Um, overlaid on top of the running system. And this is, uh, for instance, home, OPT, use local, it's entirely on the persistent partition. Uh, ATC, it's ephemeral. And all the paths you see in there um, are um, overlaid on the encrypted portion of the disk. Now, um, after the demo, we can um, have a little bit of um, understanding on how those pieces are fitting together. Um, and we have also seen how it's very nice in demo to start from a container image. So I think that's that's very uh, nice part of Kalos because it allows a higher degree of customization. For, so you can customize the system beforehand with the Docker file and add the, the tools that you like. And at the same time, it keeps the flow very simple because it goes straight from uh, generating the keys to building um, the ISO and then booting that. Um, so what are the, the consequences of um, using a USI image rather than having a UKI image? Um, so let's imagine a malware or rootkit attack. So something that uh, hits the system um, remotely, right? Um, that can be, for instance, if we have a Kubernetes cluster exposed outside somehow, or there is an application um, bug, um, anything that can be used by a remote attacker. So let's say that the remote attacker um, also um, manages to, um, to run a, mal a malware inside or a rootkit, um, then uh, we have um, a much higher degree of security because it, the, the system, um, if they modify the FA file, the system won't boot anymore. Uh, and they cannot even modify anything about it. Because 
because uh, the system is completely loaded in the RAM and mounted read only. So they cannot modify the system um, as it's seen by, uh, by, by the booting OS, and they cannot even um, tamper it afterwards because they cannot tamper the files that are used to boot because the FA files are entirely measured. Uh, and let's say even if they manage to get um, the secure boot uh, keys, um, still the system is measured, so it won't be able to uh, decrypt the, the encrypted portion of the disk, which is one of the most important things that you want to protect here. So what happens if somebody have physical access instead? So they try to insert, for instance, a live CD, or um, even um, try to, um, to hack around with those nice, uh, um, with those nice DuckDB uh, keys uh, which are compatible and for instance a flipper zero uh, can emulate a keyboard and let's say the attacker manages to have um, security hole inside and and uh, the box and leverage a security hole inside the box with uh, I don't know emulating uh, USB uh, drive so some something lower level that can um, can trigger a bug uh, from the kernel from a kernel standpoint or um, driver uh, driver standpoint. Um, in that case, we are still secure uh, because um, they can read the content of the FEI file, um, even if they take the box with them. But they cannot uh, read the content of the system, which is the, the encrypted part of the, the disk, which is the, the most important part, um, because that part is being overlaid from the encrypted partition. Now, specifically, uh, when we look at, um, for instance, how the user passwords are uh, stored, in Keras, we store those uh, into the OEM partition because um, they are part of the cloud config. So everything in ETC in Keras is ephemeral, uh, including the password D or shadow file. And so that means that any modification to, to those are going to throw them away during the boot cycle. Um, that means the only way to persist those information in the system is to reapply re -apply the configuration over and over again during the boot process. And, and those, uh, configuration parts are part of the OEM partition, which is encrypted. So what it set, what sets apart these from using a stage two? Um, so Imukov here that we see here in the in this slide, it's the internal component of Kairos, which is responsible to set up the system in an immutable manner. And uh, it's responsible also to do different things like decrypt the partitions. Um, so stage one, it's the um, it's what we call stage one, which is a USI. So um, we we have the FEI file, including the, the kernel and uh, the whole rootfs, and that's going to be booted. Um, then what happens in this, this um, boot process is that um, and there is a handover to system D, but still done in the same uh, rootfs. So there is no real switch. In stage two is that there is um, there would be uh, another step, uh, which would be after decrypting the partition, we prepare another environment uh, from another image file or actually another partition. Then we switch uh, root that one. So even the context of um, system D would change. So from uh, um, from when we boot to, um, to switching, uh, it means that there could be another system D uh, version inside the stage two. And that would go completely unnoticed because that could, cannot be measured. So what are the implications of that? So uh, let's say in the, in the same case that we talked before, uh, there is a malware or a rootkit attack remotely. Somebody having gaining access to the system then can change um, the stage two uh, in a way that it would get unnoticed. So they could replace, for instance, the system D version with a version uh, with a backdoor. And nobody would actually notice that. Um, in the same way, um, if somebody um, have um, gained access, physical access to the machine, they cannot decrypt an encrypted portion of the disk, but they can manipulate. Um, they can manipulate the stage two during runtime. So um, let's see. Let, let's say that they cannot manipulate that from a live CD uh, standpoint from the machine being. Um, um, turn it down, turn it off with a different system. But if the system is up and they manage to rely, um, for instance, on a kernel bug or a driver bug and bypass um, and get a console, 
uh, from the run, running system, then uh, they can do any manipulation and that wouldn't get noticed at all. So what's the future? So what we are looking after um, all of this work? Uh, so we are looking um, in a way to measure system this is extension because um, we think the security is very much important. We don't want to sacrifice um, that. So we would like to have a mechanism to overlay and let extend um, the OS uh, with additional packages which are not part of the USI. Um, that is for, for instance, if we want to have a big chunk or large modification to the OS and add um, very large um, packages. Um, and this is also for a UX uh, standpoint. We would like to have um, support to overlaying portion of the disk from the encrypted um, um, disk. And then we would like to have a way to uh, have a measured pivot. Um, so this is not something um, that we are um, perceiving uh, completely. So we are um, still looking at that with um, a grain of salt because we think one big image is still better for maintenance. Uh, however, um, we would like to explore the ways um, we can do that. If, if at least from a security standpoint, we can allow that. Would like to improve the UX on top of this. Uh, it's already quite um, um, easy to get this uh, started by following our talks, but we would like to improve the UX even further. And we would like to extend the support of more flavors. So currently, uh, this is working only for Fedora and Ubuntu flavors of Keros. Um, and yeah, we would like to extend this support for um, all the distros that we already have. And then we would like to. Um, blend this um, this concept with uh, remote measurement and um, be able to control also the booting of the machine from um, from a management control plane thanks for watching uh, you can visit keros.io to learn more you can try already uh, the trusted boot experience at what um, we have been discussing a year um, by following the documentation the keros website you can see the link over here, uh, you can learn more about the Trusted Boot um, by um, checking out the architecture page in the Kalos website, and then we can uh, you can engage with the community. So we have um, regular office hours. We have monthly meetups where we share um, the updates and what are the um, plan for the next releases. And then you can hook up with directly with, um, with the team uh, with uh, with Slack or Matrix or a GitHub issues of discussion. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.